What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you an update on how to import your saves into the main campaign for Inevitable Excess as well as Through the Ashes, and the effects that these two things actually have on the main campaign that you'll be able to see. So first thing I wanted to talk about was actually how this works, because it's a bit different than Kingmaker. So in Wrath of the Righteous, we've largely moved away from you manually importing your progress to the main campaign from those previous DLC saves. The way it works now is pretty hands-off on the user end. Basically, once you get to a point in the DLC, the game will make a hidden save completion file that you can't actually see unless you go into your game files and look for it. So these files actually aren't going to show up on your list of save games because they're not in that location. So this is something the game does automatically, and with the way these files are imported into the main campaign and the effects they have, it's not going to have a huge impact on the main campaign anyway outside of items and effects. So from there, let's jump into what you can actually expect when you complete these DLCs and then play through the main campaign. First up, let's talk about the Through the Ashes DLC, as I imagine that's the one people are most curious about since it just released. So the effects of Through the Ashes on the main campaign are supposed to be two things. You're supposed to be able to meet the people that you save during the DLC, as well as earn an exclusive new magic item that is then available in the main campaign. Now, meeting the people you saved is relatively unintriguing, to be honest. You don't get to have like full conversations with them. But let's talk about this new magic item and how to get it. So first thing to know about this is that Through the Ashes takes place in between the initial scene at the beginning of the game when the invasion actually happens and the battle for Defender's Heart. So if you want to see this item and get the effects, you ideally want to play it kind of in between that space. And then after the battle of Defender's Heart for the main campaign, Irabeth will offer up the new magic item, and then the NPCs that you saved will be around the Defender's Heart for you to talk to. This is the survivors, not your actual characters that you played the game with. But let's talk about the magic item. As overall, I think it's pretty interesting. It is known as the Rod of Mortiferous Blizzard. So this rod will grant you the ability to change the elemental damage of up to three spells they cast per day to cold damage. If an enemy is damaged by an instant damage spell cast with this rod, they have to pass a reflex saving throw with a DC of 13 or become slowed for a number of rounds as per the slow spell. However, if it hits, the affected enemy then emanates a 15-foot aura of frost for the same duration, and any enemy that enters this aura must also pass that same reflex saving throw, or they become slowed. Now, the rod's ability to change elemental damage to cold damage can be situationally useful. That said, the slow effect might be good for the rest of Act 1 and like maybe Act 2, but I really don't see that particular aspect of this item getting a lot of use past that because a DC of 13 is very low. By the time you hit Act 3, most enemies are going to have a save that will easily clear this. However, again, the ability to change the elemental damage type does actually play into a mythic ability called Elemental Barrage, as well as help you bypass immunities, etc. But if you're a spellcaster, you're probably using Ascendant Element anyway. But overall, the elemental damage part of it can be useful. However, the slow effect I don't see being very useful past Act 2. So now let's talk about Inevitable Excess and its effects on the main campaign, which frankly are a bit more complicated. It comes down to two things, though. The first is pretty simple. If you complete Inevitable Excess, any playthrough of the main campaign that has achieved Mythic Power will now actually also gain an extra ability called Inevitable Fate. Inevitable Fate is a once per day 10 minute buff that gives you some serious firepower. It gives you a plus one Mythic bonus to your attack rolls per three Mythic ranks. Your attacks deal an additional 10% divine damage. All offensive spells deal that extra damage as well. You gain 10% fortification per two mythic ranks. This will actually prevent you from taking critical hits. That's what fortification means. There's a percent chance that a critical hit just won't be a critical hit. It also gives you a stacking damage resistance per two mythic ranks against acid, fire, electricity, sonic, and cold damage. Every three mythic ranks, it also increases the save DC against your spells. You gain plus one per three mythic ranks to caster level checks for spell resistance. This buff is insane, and it's really only mitigated by the fact that you can use it once per day. And when they initially released the DLC, even that was bugged, and you could just use it as many times as you wanted. Now, however, the buff does seem to properly only be used once per day. However, there is a second effect of the Inevitable Excess campaign on the main campaign. However, it's a little harder to get to. So Inevitable Excess has a sort of secret ending. 
Performing that secret ending will give you access to an area that you wouldn't see otherwise, and in that secret area you can fight a secret boss known as the Inevitable Darkness, which is a stronger version of Playful Darkness, which is a mini-boss from the main campaign, who is a Death Snatcher monster type. And if you beat Inevitable Darkness on Normal, Daring, or Core, you'll actually get some extra things added to the main campaign. Ideally, you want to beat it on core difficulty, that way you can get the full effect of what this does. Because beating Inevitable Darkness on core difficulty will add three rifts to the main campaign. One in Zacharias's Cemetery, which is Sosiel's quest in Act 2, one in the Midnight Fane, and then one in Coal Fear Mines, which are in Act 3 and Act 4 respectively. And inside of these rifts, which basically function as a loot bag, so it's like a lootable item you walk up to, you loot the rift and then you get an item. If you can just beat Inevitable Darkness on normal difficulty, you're going to get a plus 7 ring in Act 2, which is insane because in Act 2, plus 2 is really what you can expect to find. But there you go, guys, the what and how of how Inevitable Excess and Through the Ashes affect the main campaign. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.